just a little bit about, as I mentioned, about energy services in general. I, after that, I would like to focus on the German market. Uh, of course, as a German, I know the, the German market best. Uh, and regarding the German market and international uh, aspects as well, I like to focus then on financing models. And uh, after that, I will give you some insights to legal framework and supportive actions, as I mentioned before, which are very crucial and key factors for uh, uh, a big energy service market. Last but not least, if we have some time, I can present to you a business case around district cooling and tri generation, which is which, which may fit uh, to the nation of India. Um, as mentioned by uh, Tobias Winter, uh, the Berlin Energy Agency is working since nearly 30 years in the field of energy efficiency. I'm heading the energy, uh, the Berlin Energy Agency since the beginning on. Uh, and so um, some people uh, often say this guy can't do anything else. Maybe that's true, but it's a passion of mine to be uh, in energy efficiency and energy services. International actions oh, we are doing, we are uh, a consultant and advisor on international level. We have been in different uh, countries and different nations uh, uh, work done. Um, we are mainly are focusing on try to help uh, to implement uh, EPC models, pilot projects, or to support national ESCO programs to, to foster the development of uh, different types of ESCO uh, schemes. This maybe give you an idea what we did in the last two decades. Um, I'd like to step into energy services. This is uh, a quite well-known um, definition of energy services, which I do not want to, uh, to go into detail, but what I like to, to, um, to stress is at the end of the day, an energy, serv uh, energy service has to be based on highly efficient technology. And as well, uh, an energy service has to be based on a contract. And at the end of the day, uh, the uh, benefits of an energy services have to be measurable. And last but not least, the energy savings which are uh, reached are, let's say, um, given in money, have to be in, in a certain share, in a negotiated share, uh, divided between the owner of, uh, let's say, a facility and the energy service company. This is a, these are the main uh, the main uh, insights of uh, of this definition. Worldwide, we do not we do have different types uh, of energy services. In nearly every country where energy services are are existing, we do have the so-called energy operating contracting energy warden. Uh, the main thing of that is that, uh, and the, let's say the key factor is that the invoicing of this service is, is based on the operation costs. Well known worldwide is the next type, it's equipment installation. This is quite simple because it's uh, the basis of, of a lot of different services. It's just based on invoicing of the installation of a technology of equipment. The next, let's say, uh, category is the so-called energy supply contracting. This including the, plan the planning, the financing and the implementation and the operation of uh, a technology with it, which is installed in industry facilities or in, in housing or in commercial centers. And the invoicing for the service is for is based on the energy which is generated and delivered by the new equipment. And last but not least, let's say the main, the, the main and the biggest uh, in contract uh, is the so-called energy performance contract because it includes um, 
regarding uh, the energy supply contracting, in addition, the, the responsibility for the system of equipment and the user behavior. And the main difference for, uh, for that type to other types that, that the invoicing is based on reduced energy uh, consumption. So these are the, the, the four types most well known. Around the world, just in small insight, uh, we have a, a steadily greasing market, uh, 26 billion US dollar uh, in the year 20, uh, 2017. Of course, uh, we have in the in the in in in, in, in huge nations like USA or like in China as well. In the whole EU, we do have uh, big parts of these ESCO these worldwide ESCO markets. As well, in India, we do have uh, a, um, a big and a great development to to bring ESCO service into the market. I have to underline. Talking about uh, the most typical uh, energy service type uh, we, we have to face on the energy supply uh, contracting, uh, where we have to know that um, the reason behind that, why energy supply contracting is so common, is that uh, it's quite easy to adapt to the existing world. In the existing world, for example, in the building sector, the building owner uh, owns a, his building or facility. He is responsible for the operation of the building. He he gets from energy supply companies from outside. Uh, he gets electricity or cooling or heat, uh, and he's paying for that. Uh, to adapt an energy service to that is more or less um, easily possible because uh, the energy service provider who is coming into that game has to bring in uh, new equipment, for example, a new, uh, new uh, heating system or um, some electrical equipment into, uh, into that building. Uh, and he, uh, he's, he's paid for this service directly by the owning building owner. This is at the, the next step is the so-called energy performance contract. In that case, um, we uh, we have uh, the energy service provider, which comes as well into uh, an existing world, but he his job is and his payment, his refinancing is working uh, in direct uh, line to the former payment or the lowering of the former payment to uh, the energy supply system. And this means that uh, he's giving uh, to the building owner a saving, not only uh, the installation of a new technology and a guarantee on the operation of this, of this uh, new technology, he has to give a saving guarantee in money. Um, from, from my personal history in the field of energy efficiency and energy services, I can tell you that these uh, system to implement 20 years ago, uh, for, for example, in, in, the, in the state of Berlin, it was quite difficult because um, building owners doesn't, doesn't, be, doesn't believe at that time that it's possible from an external uh, service provider to give a sa saving guarantee. We have to convince there uh, over a, lo a long period of months to, to step forward for some pilot pro projects, but afterwards we implemented with some ex extinguished uh, energy service provider this service for example, uh, the first uh, contracts we um, we delivered brought 25% cost uh, reduction to the building owner, means to the state. This is a very crucial point of uh, which convinced at the end of the day uh, people to doing more and to establish certain schemes for uh, energy performance contracting. A little bit more to the German market. In the German market, since the last 
let's say two, uh, two decades, but here on, in this chart, it's, it's, you, uh, you can easily see the last decade. We have a, a good development, a strong development on market revenues uh, in Germany. Um, the energy forms uh, which are supplied in contracting, uh, uh, for example, in, 20, in the year 2019, were mainly, mainly based on heat because energy services are uh, really strong related to the, to the housing and to, to the, the commercial sector. Uh, um, so this means we do need heat. You in India, I know, um, are more focusing and have more need uh, on cooling, but it's equivalent um, in, in the same, it's nearly the same technology with another, with another uh, output. So, uh, just part of this energy forms uh, is electricity, nearly 10%, which uh, is um, brought out of energy services installs. Let's talk about the market share of the different types of energy services I mentioned in general beforehand. Uh, just I would say nearly 10% uh, of the market is based on energy operating contracting. Uh, this is a uh, um, years ago. This was not a very important uh, model, but it's increasing. We have as well, let's say uh, around 10% uh, energy performance contracting in the market. The reason behind that is that the energy performance contract is not easy to bring in. And often the, the, the duration time which is needed for refinancing uh, the investment is going on, in the, on up to 15 years. And this is a lot of time which means that, for, for example, industries uh, are not so in favor um, to step into energy performance contracting. But on the, the housing or on the, the federal uh, state level for um, public use building, energy performance is very well developing uh, with uh, a year by year rising rate. So uh, the main part, as I mentioned beforehand, is uh, nearly 80%, I would say, uh, by energy supply contracting. The reason behind that is that, especially in the sector of housing, um, around about, I would say, up to 500 different, different ESCOs around the nation uh, exist and are working. Um, there we do have a lot of standards, there we do have as well a lot of uh, uh, supporting actions and a good uh, legal framework, which I was, will present to you a little bit later. And another reason may be that invoicing on energy delivery uh, uh, is a very common thing. Customers are used to that, that kind of bills. And of, of course, the energy so, uh, service companies can uh, contract on that base quite easy. As well, the, the financing institutes, which are mainly behind the energy supply uh, contracting uh, companies, uh, easily can understand this quite common um, scheme. Just just to give you an idea of what's happening in, in the field of energy supply contracting, I do not want to start with, let's say, normal heating aspects. I would like to focus on, for example, uh, renewables. This means we have rooftop uh, photovoltaics uh, very often as well in large cities. Uh, this is, for example, a picture which shows you that on the Berlin wholesale market, we, um, we, there is an ins installation of uh, a, huge, uh, a huge PV rooftop um, facility, um, which, um, yes, um, brings into uh, 
uh, a number uh, of uh, PV models on uh, square meters of 3, 330,000 square meters uh, roof. So I do not want to get into too much in the details. It's, as I mentioned, based on the energy supply contract uh, as I uh, de uh, described before. Another, another example as well from my hometown here in, in Berlin is an energy supply contract which includes different technologies and which is uh, installed in um, a co convention center uh, with, with some wellness area and restaurants inside. And there you can easily find out that uh, nearly all of our common efficient technologies like CHP and renewable, renewables like PV and solar thermal are in a combination installed. So um, I brought these two uh, different uh, examples because they may fit as well to different circumstances in, in India or in different uh, states in India as well. Now, I would like to step a little bit more in the, in the background, which was asked about financing uh, and financing models behind energy services or beside of energy services. Uh, it's absolutely clear that uh, energy services as energy schemes in all, at all, investment in energies in all, I need some capital resources. Uh, and uh, they include often loans and public grants are given as well in Germany and subsidies. And, and this is uh, uh, a crucial point as, we, as well, a third party, party financing is as well quite uh, well known. What are the financing options behind energy services? The first, and let's say the quite, the quite, uh, a quite common uh, um, model is that the customer, means the building owner, the, the owner of the facility, uh, is doing his own, uh, is, do, uh, is doing his own financing, and is paying for the investment, uh, which is often done by the ESCO. The remuneration of the service include uh, the payback as well of the investment. The, the grant of credit and the debt service is, is, is uh, in a relationship between the bank and the customer. This is some uh, in, in some or in a, in a, in a, in a number of, of cases done. With the ESCO, with the ESCO, we do have two different uh, uh, possibilities or well-known possibilities to do the financing. First thing is that the ESCO is directly the, the partner to the bank. The debt service and the grant credit of credit is in the relationship between the ESCO and the bank. The investment is brought by the ESCO and the re remuneration of the services and the investment is in a certain rate, in a fixed rate or in, in a rate which is depending on the energy saved, energy savings is going from the customer to the ESCO. Um, I like to mention that this, this is a quite well-known model in Germany behind a lot of energy supply contracts. It depends, of course, on the credibility uh, of the ESCO. Uh, some small ESCOs coming from the SME side or ESCOs which are, let's say, new in the market may have some problems to get these service by the bank. But therefore, in Germany, there is established some instruments to overcome this, these hurdles. I would like to focus on that a little bit later. In the, in the field of energy performance contracts, mainly known in Germany, 
There is another aspect uh, which have to be underlined. The, the subject of forfeiting is a part of this financing. What does it mean? Uh, this means that uh, the bank um, uh, as well is the partner to the ESCO directly, but uh, the customer give guarantee uh, directly to the bank that he will pay uh, the re his re remuneration uh, uh, as a guarantee to the bank. So this kind of forfeiting uh, costs a little bit more as uh, what I, I would say uh, as a normal uh, bankable uh, um, grant, but it's not uh, too much to make it impossible on the on, on, on the market point of view. This is often done in huge energy performance contracts here in Germany. Um, I like to uh, set another aspect into this uh, presentation, uh, means uh, what are um, the, different, the different tasks an ESCO have to fulfill? Why, uh, why do I present this picture? I would like to, to underline with that, that ESCO business is not an easy business. To have to be uh, successful as an ESCO, you have to be um, uh, well trained. You have to have the right stuff. And of course, you have to do a good job. So because you have to deal at the end of the day as owner and operator of a certain efficiency equipment, which is installed directly um, in the facility which is owned by uh, a customer like an industry or uh, a state-owned building or something like that, you have a high responsibility um, uh, via your customer. And of course, you have a high responsibility um, in front of the market uh, to different partners. For not only to the bank, you have to have uh, responsibility to, of course, utilities. If you run a uh, dry generation based on natural gas, for example, you have to have to deal with the utility on, 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 on the natural gas side. So as well, NASCO has to, to, to be uh, quite uh, experienced uh, in front of construction companies. In some cases, ESCOs are coming from that sector. And I, just to mention, ESCO service has to be um, insured. So, uh, and, uh, and if you are dealing with electricity, you have to be in contact, for example, with grid oper uh, operators and so on. So it's a quite complex uh, situation. It's, it's of course possible to step into the market, but ESCOs, have to be prepared for that. This is what I would uh, underline on that point. Coming to the legal framework, as I, uh, as I mentioned before, and supportive actions, as we know them, as especially from Germany. Um, in front of energy efficiency in Germany, we do have a quite strong, and from my personal point of view, uh, uh, a quite successful uh, legal and political framework. Uh, you may say, uh, from the, from the point of view of other nations, wow, this is a lot of a lot of uh, laws and acts. Um, yes, uh, this this is true, but. Um, we do have as well uh, different political uh, goals behind that, all in line with our CO2 reduction goal nationwide and with our security uh, uh, of supply goal and of course uh, in front of that energy uh, has to be payable for all 
people uh, in Germany. So uh, in front of that, uh, I would say this is a, a, a strong and a good uh, legal framework. Of course, we do have a, a Renewable Energy Act. I, I'm, I'm sure that in your dialogue, you, you stressed this point over years. Um, what I like to, uh, to underline is that we do have right, quite new a law on CO2 emissions trading, which, uh, which is implemented uh, from the beginning of this year, which gives, from my point of view, a very strong uh, uh, um, um, incentive uh, to step into energy efficiency, especially in the, in the heating sector and the energy efficient sector. We do have as well an energy save, save since decades an energy saving audience, and we have an eco tax law. And uh, this is as well important. We do have a CHP Act and CFHP um, incentives. Besides, beside that, we do have as, oh, as well uh, a support other uh, supportive action and programs in Germany, which are especially. Uh, in regarding energy efficiency from a high priority. First of all, uh, and we I like to mention uh, the KFW support program, which is unique uh, from my point of view worldwide, which uh, helps uh, helps a lot uh, for um, building owners and as well in the industry and commercial sector to step into uh, energy um, efficiency. They offer grants, uh, they offer loans on a very, very, very uh, good um, rate. We do have um, as well um, EPC, in front of EPC, um, uh, especially EPC facilitation support program. This is a grant program as well which helps building owners and others who are interested to analyze their potential to bring in EPC, to get, it, to get therefore uh, a grant to bring in uh, technical uh, assistance. We do have, uh, let's say as a, a background, we do have a center of expertise for contracting or energy services. Um, based, uh, provided by the German energy agency, the so-called DENA. We do have on the industry uh, side of the ESCOs, the es Association of, for Sea Heat Supply, it's more or less well known as uh, one part of the ESCO uh, associations. They have their own uh, supporting program, how to uh, support their uh, members to do a good job. And last but not least, we do have uh, a program which is, um, as, I, as I know, uh, financed as well by the Ministry of Power and Economics, uh, a definitely guarantees program to special banks who are, um, who are behind ESCO services. Going a little bit into detail, why uh, are I'm stressing on that? If we are talking about ESCO services, and if we are if we have the goal to foster energy services or implement energy services, a real framework, you have to have the right expertise on on every side. It means on 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 three sides. Means we do we do uh, we do have. Uh, of course, uh, the expertise on the side of the industry, or on on the customer, let's say, or on uh, the housing companies, we do have to have the expertise on the industries, means the um, ESCOs themselves, and of course, we have to have some expertise on the user of facilities like uh, people who are uh, using public buildings or people or employees in industry facilities. Therefore, the center of expertise, uh, expertise of contracting is uh, established since some years 
and doing a, a, um, a great job in trainings, in mentoring programs, in a nationwide dialogue on energy service, and in a in a advice systems to implement model or pilot projects. This is uh, a good example uh, for best practice. Another best practice is, of course, the promoting, as I mentioned, of 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 orientation consulting, as we as we know that, uh, which is um, given by um, the BAFA, which is as well an institution, which is uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's which supports the the Ministry of Power. And as I mentioned as well, the so-called Association for Heat Supply um, offers to his members consulting services in ele electricity tax and eco taxes, in tendering assistance, and offers a guarantee statements of security of contracts and energy liver delivers. What does it mean? Guarantee statements of security as security. Um, this is, from my point of view, a quite uh, convincing uh, uh, thing. So if you in Germany, if you hire or step into a contract with one ESCO, which is a member of this association, and maybe during the duration time of your contract, your ESCO partner gets in trouble, you have the chance via this guarantee uh, statement of the association that another um, experience ESCO will step into your contract and will secure that the service will be done over the um, duration time which is uh, um, given. Last not least, I want to want to to come to another supportive action: the deficit guarantees. The deficit guarantee is a part of the German government national action plan for energy efficiency. Um, and it's um, an action which is uh, set in place by the German Association of Guarantee Banks. What did they do? Uh, first, uh, first of all, they identified um, areas where energy services are suitable areas where energy services given by SMEs uh, means small and maybe new ESCOs are suitable. And with uh, a standard contract for energy services, they provide um, a service that the SMEs can get uh, a good rate, a guarantee rate by a guarantee bank um, to finance their services and the equipment they bring in through their, through their escort services into customers' buildings. The guarantee is up to 80% of the requested loan. They are small-scale loans by, because this support action focus on small SMEs and small escort services. For example, for um, in, uh, for indoor lighting systems to replace them, bring in new highly efficient indoor lighting system, for example, in uh, uh, an industry hall. Therefore, this kind of action is suitable. The annual guarantee commission of the loan amount is about 0 0.8 up to 1.6 of the loan amount which is uh, a number in Germany, yes, but in cases where the ESCO is quite new uh, and uh, the service is quite new for the, for the customer, it's suitable. Of course, the precondition is that there is um, enough energy efficient potential, cost saving potential, to do a good business concept in that case. That's what I would like to um, um, give as, let's say, an opening. And I would close with a certain kind of business case 
uh, because I, um, Tobias Winter just mentioned, I have been in India some years ago and did some consultancy. And I offering was wondering about the situation that's especially uh, in, the, in, this, in the field of cooling, the type of district cooling based maybe on dry generation is not well known. Maybe this is not the case today anymore, but um, this was my idea to, to give you an idea what we are doing uh, in, in this case, uh, this study case is from Berlin. What we, what we are doing in Berlin, Berlin uh, regarding dry generation since years. So for example, um, an office uh, or a service building complex in downtown Berlin with a square meter heated floor space from 42,000 has a heating demand, has a cooling demand, has an electricity demand. For that, this is quite common. Around the world, you find tons of the, that different building, uh, this building complexes. So what, what is done in that case? Why are uh, our service uh, different uh, natural gas boilers are installed, two natural gas-based CHP units are installed, and an absorption chiller is installed. This facility is running now for, uh, for 15 years on a very, very, uh, uh, very, very um, successful way. Uh, it's, it's lowered the costs to the building owner and to the building users up to 15% under market level and gave them a, a, as well a secure cooling system and a secure uh, heating. This is a little bit, this shows a little bit about the technology behind that. I do not want to stress this in, in this pres presentation, but what I would like to, uh, to, to say that um, with quite well, well uh, known technologies like CHP, like absorption chiller, it's good to step into the ESCO market. And I'm sure that companies who are installing, who are um, running or operating these, these kinds of technologies are existing in the great nation of India. And so for, for, that, uh, for that, it's maybe a good idea to focus a little bit on that um, if we try to foster energy services with new financing models, of course, into your country. Um, this is, uh, I do not want to stress any more that this example, but it shows quite easily that efficiency is given, energy and emission savings are given over now 15 years. This is what I like to present to you. I, I hope I'm not. I was not too long, uh, and of course, I'm prepared for all your questions. Thank you so much.